Welcome back to the Crochet Credits. Those are my friends over at Yarnspirations.com. Today is the Llama No Drama. This is a stitch along and we are going to progress today in starting this completely from scratch. So today we're going to do the head and the neck and I'm going to explain a little bit more but because this is video number one let's talk a little bit about this pattern before we get there and let's see what we're going to get ourselves into today. For this pattern it's recommending Red Heart with Love and you'll be very surprised that you need three balls of the Aran. This llama is a lot bigger than you ever imagined. It's actually 15 inches tall. Think about how tall it is and in actual fact I've already done um, most of the legs. I, I just have one more to do on camera and I suspect it's going to take almost just one whole ball just to do the legs because of the fur. So what we are, are going to be using is Aran as the main color and then you see the other uh, odd colors. You don't need a lot of that color the other stuff here. It's just this main color. You're also going to need a set of safety eyes. Now I did place an order online for them. I haven't received them yet so I'm going to be using blue eyes for my llama today. These are called safety eyes and what they are is that they they have a backing that, that looks jetted out like so and then this is a washer so I don't want to apply it now but when I'm ready I'm going to slide it through the, the uh, fabric itself and then just snap it into place and once these are snapped in it's pretty much permanent. <laughs> it's, it's virtually almost impossible if not impossible to get those out. So you need a pair of those. We're going to be using a size F, a 3.75 millimeter crochet hook in order to play and you also need a size 8 millimeter size L for the blanket area that you're going to be doing. So these are kind of what you need. You also need stitch markers but what I like to do is I like to use spare yarn. So we will be using spare yarn here on camera uh, just to demonstrate that for you in order to keep our, our counts consistent. Um, what else are we going to need? We're going to need a tapestry needle for sure and you're also going to need polyfill stuffing. So as we're working on this um, like for example I just did the legs. I haven't stuffed these yet because it's too premature. When I'm ready to put it on like look at the size of this like it's massive. So you can see that once you start stuffing st uh, it's awesome. After you get sections done you want to leave extra long yarn tails and you'll use those yarn tails in order to sew it onto the project when you're ready. So when you're ready to do all that. So we're going to be doing that today as well. So there's lots of little notes that you can take an opportunity to read. It says that the gauge is not important but obviously the tighter that you do it the less of the bleed of the of the stuffing. So if you put stuffing in here and you way over stuff you might see the stuffing through it. So you want to be nice and tight with your crochet hook in order to do that. Also you want to use the, the photograph as your guide to sew on. So you just have the photograph that is available to you and what you can see here that is the main difference and I've seen people complete these. You want to shape the face. Do you see how the eyes look like it's sunken in a little bit? You can uh, cause that to happen by using a tapestry needle to drag a piece of yarn connecting one side to the other to pull it in. So I've done that on other projects before. So when you look at face on in this thing it's not just a round circle like a cone like a snow cone. It's actually a little bit shaped so that it pulls it in on one side. So we're going to be uh, doing that today as well. We're going to be uh, just separating this into four major videos and the major videos is going to be doing the head, the neck, then we're going to do the body and then we're going to do the tail, the legs and then the ears and then the bridle and the blanket. So those are your four. So be all, but we also have two step out videos that have already been done. So let's talk about that next. So I decided to do two step out videos. One is called a, an adjustable ring. I'll also be demonstrated on here on video number one as well and what this is is when you start off something like this instead of chaining a certain amount and then creating a ring an invisible uh, or an adjustable ring, a magic ring is one of those items that you can keep it completely shut. So it's great to know if you're doing hats or anything you don't want a hole in the top. That's the way to go. So there's a separate video for that. Also the fur is also separate but there is a difference between this fur and this fur. This here is the legs. Now in the legs there's no growth so meaning that the rounds don't change any counts. So when you have here and you start having shaping you're going to notice that there's going to be growth and the growth will happen on round number three. So let's take a look at the pattern and let's determine the first stitch and I'll explain what I'm talking about because I'm going to explain to you in this video we're going to do a first stitch increase or first stitch decrease or just a regular first stitch. So there's three different types. So on page number one you're going to see rounds number one, two and three make up the first stitch. So the fur in number one is the chain ten. It's the actual fur creating and that's on the front loops only of the round. Then on round number two you're going to go in the back loops 
of the last round that you were just already in and just being able to single crochet in there. So you wanna verify your count. So for example, say you were going around and you need 30 st uh, stitches. After you do the, the chain loops here, I'd recommend that you count and make sure you have 30 by the time you get back around. You can always hide any imperfections in this thing because of the fur. The next one is round number three and it's working in both loops, single crochet in each. So in the head and neck area, you're going to notice that we have this kind of idea. So it says rounds 22 and 23 works round one and two from the first stitch. So that's rounds one and two. So this will be number the third round, which will be a, a, uh, two together. So it'll be a decrease. So round 24, when you go to do that, you're going to decrease stitches. Round 25 to 27, it says work rounds one to three. So it's just a regular first stitch, those three rounds. And then back here on round 28, 29, it says work rounds one and two. And then you'll see that there's a decrease. So we're gonna be uh, focusing on that when we get there. And what we're going to do today's video is uh, going to look closer at this. So I'm recommending if you have a printer, probably print this out, get your pencil or pen ready. And what you wanna do is you wanna start check marking things off as you're passing by. So the nice thing about it, heck, uh, head and neck, you only have to do one. So we're gonna follow the instructions using your 3.75 millimeter size F. And we're gonna be working our way through at this and just checking it off as we go. And our goal here is to end at the end of the neck here. So I'll just put a stop here. And then next video, we'll take it on then from the body as we continue along. So we're gonna start progressively. You will need your safety eyes for today and uh, we'll be getting to that in just So the first thing that we need to do is that we need to demonstrate an adjustable ring. It's also called a magic circle. So with the yarn leading to, from the yarn ball, just lay it down in front of your hand like so, so that the yarn strand is here. Remember we did a step out video of this so it's in the video playlist for this series. So just uh, put two fingers out now and just lay it down in front. Take the yarn that's leading to the yarn ball and just go up over top of your finger, fingers and just cross over and then just sandwich it in between so that you end up with the crossing over. Okay, I'll demonstrate that again. So just in the front, okay, two fingers. This is leading to the yarn ball here. So wrap it around and when you cross over, cross it over the top and then just use another finger just to hold it. So we're just gonna scoop up underneath the front first one here and just scoop it up. And when you pull it off your fingers, just pinch and keep the straggler and the circle together and then just chain one and that will lock it so that you have the center of this ring. So when you crochet the very first section, make sure you go up over the ring and also this strand here so we can pull it shut. And let's begin then and start ourselves with the magic adjustable or adjustable ring. I call it a magic circle. And then we're gonna be using a stitch marker at the end of this and do a continuous revolution. So let's officially start round number one. Now that your magic circle's in, you've already just considered uh, to lock it. So you're gonna put in six single crochet into that ring. Go right up over top of the other strand. Let's count those up together. Do nice and tight. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Before you move on, I want you just to pull up a loop and grab a stitch marker. I don't care what you use as long as you have something. I use spare yarn because I just have a lot of it and I'm just gonna pull it through and that'll mark my sixth stitch that I'll have to worry about later. Once you get that in, I want you to pull on the other strand here Pull it nice and tight and it will pull it into a circle. Just pull this up into a loop and pull this. I don't wanna see any uh, holes in the center. So keep pulling and then turn it to the back side. Get your tapestry needle at this time and we're gonna secure it. You cannot not secure it. Um, I saw a complaint online last week. A person does this and doesn't secure it and then her hats pop open. So what I want you to do is just work your way back into the stitch work Okay, I'm on the back side of the circle. It's gonna be tight, so just take your time. So just go once. And then go in the other, and go in another spot twice. And then finally a third spot three times. Once you have that in three times, you can safely just cut that down 
and your magic circle or your adjustable ring will be nice and tight in the middle. So let's uh, begin and we're going to now move on to round number two. So round number two I'm gonna put this back in. Whenever you move a stitch marker when you take out your hook like that make sure that you do tie it, uh, put it nice and tight back. Now I want you to go to the sixth stitch back. So just look and you have to do it the first time just to make sure. So count back. So one, two, three, four, five, and six. Six back is the first one. The first one it's always a little bit fussy to get it in there. So I'm sorry I'm covering that with my hands. So get that first one in and I want you to put in two single crochets. So one and two and now the remaining stitches all the way around are gonna each get two single crochets. So one and two and where am I gonna stop? I'm gonna stop on the one that has the stitch marker in play. So instead of having to count a lot it just is a nice easy way to do that. The trick with amigurumi is to be tight so when you get started with these things it's a little awkward if you're not used to crocheting tight like I'm not used to crocheting tight. Um, so it gets a little awkward in the very beginning but then you get used to it. As we get into the first stitch we're really gonna pay attention to our counts. But for now we're just putting in two single crochets in each one. So that was the very last one and before you move on I want you to move up that stitch marker. So just put your hook underneath that loop and pull a section of that strand through. If you were doing stitch markers that have clips you'll have to unclip it and reclip it. But the secret is is that once you pull it out make sure this goes back nice and tight and that was round number two. So we're gonna be um, speeding through our rounds. I'm just gonna give you the set of instructions and then meet you at the end of each of the rounds. So round number three we're going to continue now into the very next stitch. Do one single crochet and the next one has two into the same one. Okay, so the repeat pattern is one into the next one and then two into the next one after that. And please do that all the way around to the stitch marker. This is round number three. So I'm just coming into the last one. If your stitch counts are right the last stitch will have two in there. And then move up that stitch marker and then we're gonna begin round number four. So but move that stitch marker up before first and then pull things nice and tight back together. Okay, so round number four. So the next two are gonna each be a single crochet. So one and two and then the next one is gotten two, has two in there. So one and two. Okay, so the repeat pattern just to recap is there's gonna be one in the next two. So one and two and then two into the next one. Please do that all the way around. This is round number four. So round number five we're gonna start. I've already moved up my stitch marker. I had two in the last one. Round number five the first three are gonna be each a single crochet. So one, two and three and then the next one has two. So one and two. Okay so you're gonna do this again. So keep repeating that. So the first three are gonna be single crochets. So one, two and three and the next one has two. Please do this all the way around. This is round number five. Okay five is now complete. Round number six is just one single crochet in each of the stitches all the way around. That's number six. One single in each. Okay all the way around and number six let's do number seven. It's an increase again so the next four are gonna be a single crochet. So one, two, three, four, and then the next uh, one has two. So the repeat pattern for number seven is four in a row and then two. Please do that all the way around. Round number seven. Okay number seven is complete. The last one has two in there. That's just a matter of keeping the right count. So we did that. So rounds number eight, nine, and ten are all the same. It's just one single crochet in each. So please do rounds number eight, nine, and ten. Just one single crochet in each and meet me at the end of number ten and we'll carry on from that point. So eight, nine, and ten are now done. You can see the snout is starting to take place. So now rounds number eleven we're gonna expand again. So the next five in a row will each be a single crochet and then two. So five and then two. So two meaning into the same stitch. Please do that now for round number uh, eleven. So five and then two into the same. 
Okay, 11 is complete. Rounds number 12 and 13 are each just one single crochet in each stitch. So please do number 12 and 13, one single crochet in each. Okay, 12 and 13 are now complete. Round number 14 is an expansion round. So the next six are by itself and then two into the same. Six and then two. Please do that now for round number 14. Round 14 is complete. Now round number 15. 15 is seven and then two. So seven and, or single crochets in a row and then two into the next one. So seven and two for round 15. Round 15 is complete. Now round number 16. One single crochet in each of the stitches going all the way around. So round number 16, one single crochet in each. So 16 is complete. 17, here we go. We're gonna do another expansion round. It's gonna be eight single crochets and then two into the next. Eight and then two. Please do round number. 17. Next. Okay, round number 17 is complete and finally for the last two rounds here, do not fasten off though because we're gonna be switching gears after that and rounds number 18 and 19 are just one single crochet in each. So please do rounds number 18 and 19. Meet me back here in just a moment. Okay, rounds number 18 and 19 are done. Now we're now gonna move on to round number 20. So we're going to create a neck hole now and this is gonna be neat. I didn't know how it was actually gonna be done so I'm kinda just learning as I'm reading it along here too. So what we want to do is that we want to start off and we wanna chain 15 and we wanna skip 15 of these here and this is going to create an opening and the best way I can think about it is if you think about making knit mitts when you start building them up you leave a hole so you then you chain a certain amount and jump over which leaves a hole um, for the thumb and so we're kinda doing the same thing but in the case that we're gonna be adding in the neck later. So what I need you to do in this case is that we need to chain 15. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 13, 14, 15. Once you get 15, I want you to skip the next 15 stitches. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 15 and start in the 16th one and single crochet. And I want you to single crochet the remaining of these stitches going around and uh, so what I want you to do at the end is that we want to make sure that we have our stitch counts uh, correct when we hit uh, round number 21. So we're gonna do round 21 and then we're gonna just do a verify of our stitch counts to make sure that they're working. So please just one single crochet for the remaining going back to the stitch marker for round number 20. So I'm back all the way around and now what I want to do for round number 21 is that I want a single crochet in the next 15 of these um, chains. So when I, uh, I'm done this round, I wanna make sure that there is a total of 60 single crochets going all the way around. So you can either count the 15 chains right off the bat if you'd like to and uh, we can just do that and if you're wrong then it's just easier to correct it right now. So let's just do that on camera see if it works out. So this is number two and I'm just going into one hump only. Two, this is three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. This is 12, 13, 14, So what I'm doing now is that I have my 15 in and I'm gonna continue to single crochet the remaining of the round just like you already know it and then just continuing to go as normal but at the end of the round I wanna verify that there is actually a total of 60 which includes all the ones that you just went across the chain all the way back to the stitch marker. Please verify that before moving on and then we're gonna get into some of the fun stuff then with the first stitch for the very first time. So let's begin to do round number 22 and 23 and these are the part of the first stitch. So I told you in the very beginning of this tutorial that the first stitch is actually three rounds. It's one round of the fur, the second round is the back loop of the same round to back it up and then the third round is progression to move on. So when we're doing this uh, uh, form the neck opening that you see here, it the third round is actually going to be a decrease. So it's actually gonna get smaller. So in the way that you can see it, this is the front of the snout. So now we're gonna shape ourselves to the back of the head. So we need to get smaller. So to do the first stitch, 
you have to keep an eye on your stitch on your stitch markers the most. And uh, what you need to do to do the first stitch is that you just immediately chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10. This is gonna be much slower now, now that you're doing the first stitch, but you gotta think that the first stitch is only one round out of three. So if you can just put that into your head, it's it's still a lot of work, but it's, if you're thinking about how big this thing is, at least it's not every round, thank God. So you're just gonna go into the front loop of the next one. So if you're new to crochet, which I can't suspect you're doing this tutorial if you are, um, you're gonna do the front loop only and then single crochet. And then you're gonna chain 10. So 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 8, 9, 10 and immediately jump to the next front loop. So there is gonna be a lot of work here. This is what's gonna suck your yarn away out of your pile. <laughs> and uh, you're gonna do that then all the way around. This is round number 22 which will be adding the fur and then when we come back then I'm going to show you how then to do round number 23 which is on the back loop and then progress to do a decrease in 24. So please do round 22. Uh, put on the pot of coffee. You're gonna need to do it and uh, let's just put in the time now. So just come all the way around in round number 22. So on the back side here you should see all the exposed back loops that you did not touch. And that's where we're gonna be playing next. So we're playing in that same round. So here when I got all the way around the last stitch is in the one that was marked with the single crochet. So that was the last front loop. So when we come all the way around the back loop of that same one is going to be the finish. So to start round number 22 or 23 which is gonna be backing up this thing is that we're going to start in the very next stitch. So just lean them forward. Just use your thumb and go down and let's just take a closer and look here. Let's just zoom in and what I want to do is that right where we've got the stitch marker that's not the one we wanna play in and it's just, just follow this like the rainbow. So just follow the strand the next one and where it's landing is the starting of the back loops and all you just wanna do is single crochet in the back loop. So I'm just gonna pull this a little bit tighter and start in the back loop. So just follow that over to there and my trick is here is that we started with 60 stitches before we did the, the, the fur. There should be 60 stitches here when we go around. I'm not gonna count right now. I'm gonna count at the end because there's 60. It's a lot. So staying on the back loop then just do one single crochet in each and this is how you would do round number 23 and this is the second round of doing the first stitch. So whenever you do the first stitch this is exactly what you're just doing. You're just going on the back loops only with single crocheting to give it a bit of backing to the loops. So please do this. This is round number 23. So I've just come all the way back around. Because it's the first stitch here I wanna make sure that there is 60 stitches in this case. So this number does change and the instructions gives you the number of stitches going all the way around. If for example you ended up with 61 then I would just backtrack out and just put two together as a single crochet. If you have like 59 or maybe even 58 just throw in two extra um, single crochets somewhere and then it will bring you back to 60 because it's the first stitch is really easy to get away with stuff like that. So what I want to do then is that I wanna verify that count and right what I want to do then is follow the rainbow over. So follow that stitch again and then that will become the beginning then of moving along in this pattern. So then we're just gonna reach over and we're gonna do one single crochet in the next, this is the decrease so you're going to do um, one single crochet in the next eight. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven and eight. And then the next one becomes two together. So just going in, pull through and then in, pull through and then pull through three loops. So it's two stitches just became one and the wonderful thing about it if you can think there's an upside to this is that every time you eliminate a stitch you eliminate one, doing one of these loops. So remember what it's gonna be. So there's gonna be eight in a row and then two together. So eight in a row and two together and you're gonna do that all the way around for round number 24. So as I'm coming around on number 24 the last two are two together. So my stitch counts are right and I'm not fudging anything so that's a great thing. Uh, you never know on camera I can do that kind of thing and people sometimes catch me. So um, so two together in the final. So rounds number 24 
five, 26 and 27 is again the first stitch. Now the advantage to this first stitch that we're about to do is that there is no decrease. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna leave this with you. So remember what you do, you just start off and you chain 10. So one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and 10 and immediately come to the next front loop only in single crochet. You're gonna do that all the way around. You're then going to, when you get all the way around, you want to put into the back loop just one single crochet. The magic count on this one now because we've just eliminated stitches in round 24 is that there will be 54 stitches going all the way around and then the third round what you just wanna do is one single crochet in each. So I'm gonna leave rounds number 25, 26 and 27 and is the regular first stitch without any increase or decrease. So just keep it to 54 stitches. So please do rounds number 25, 26 and 27. So I just finished up to round number 27 and remember there was no decrease I just continued along. So round number three of, of the first stitch was just one single crochet in each. So now we're gonna go to do the first stitch again 28, 29. So we're gonna add our fur in again and do our back looping then for round 29 and round number 30 when we come back then I will have a decrease again for you to get a little bit smaller. So uh, continue now to do the first stitch for, uh, <laughs> for uh, 28 uh, and then back looping 29 and then 30. I'll be back here to show you the decrease. Let's get started now. So I've just finished round number 29. So the third row around we're gonna do a decrease this time. I actually just realized reading ahead too it's not always the third uh, row that we will decrease but we'll get to it when we get there. So um, just stick with me folks. So what we're going to do is we're gonna do a decrease in round number 30. So the next seven uh, starting out and it will be in a regular stitch. Remember it's the third one. So it's one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven and then it'll be two together. Okay, so that we go. So seven and then two, seven and two and we're gonna do that all the way back and you should have 48 stitches by the time you get around. So please verify that and when we come back what we're going to do is that we are going to um, 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 put on the eyes and then we're gonna get that set into motion as well. So let's begin to do that next. So go all the way around. So I'm coming up to the end of number 30. The last two are two together and it's just a matter of keeping the right count. It's important that you do that and move up your stitch marker. So now they're asking us to now place our eyes. Now the eyes you want to be able to just fold this now to be able to be exactly in half. So just kind of move this around so that you can find the halfway point of where it's opening up here and then just push it down. Now let's uh, just go through the instructions and what I'm going to do is that I'm gonna grab a, uh, a stitch marker in case spare yarn. Now they said on here that there is um, it's rounds 15 and 16. So about third okay so 15 and 16. So going back from the very beginning so they want you to count back. Okay so we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Okay so we're gonna put in our first stitch marker. It's around here somewhere. Actually the eyes will be on this side. So it's there somewhere and just count so it's about eight. So we're gonna stay within this revolution right here. So we're gonna go one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and eight. So I'm gonna say the first one is right here. And what I'm gonna do is that I can count it to the other side or what I can do is that I can just stick my hook right straight through this thing and get the other side just exactly where it should be. Okay so just straight on through. Actually let's pull it from the other side. So I think I have the eyes here. So let's just open it up and see if the eyes make sense. So I'm looking for the bottom here. So what I'm gonna do before I snap these into position right where I've done it, I'm going to place an eye in to the hole and actually make a determination. Do not snap them shut. So leave that washer out for a moment. And they're suggesting that you may want to lightly stuff as well. So that you get a sense of where, where it is. So you can grab your stuffing. So let me grab some stuffing and let's just check it 
So my eyes are now in. Is it good enough or not? So when I go to do this I want to suck in the eyes a little bit and I'm gonna use a, a stitch in order to do that. And I think that it's actually pretty good. I'm looking for the out mouth opening here or sorry the neck opening. Make sure that it's aligned with that and basically you take a risk. So as soon as you're happy with that you can actually pull that yarn out and then just snap it with your washers. So taking out the stuffing just in the back side where it's popping through grab one of the washers and then push down. You can hear it snapping as it goes down. It's permanent so if I made a mistake I have to redo this whole thing. So now I'm gonna take the other one and snap it. And therefore my eyes are completely in place and now I'm ready to move on. So let's move along. We're going on now to rounds number 31 and 32. So 31 is the fur and then 32 is the back loop. So I want you to do that and there will be a total of 48 stitches going all the way around when you do the second round with the back loops. Please do rounds number 31 and 32. 31 is the chain 10 and 32 is the back loops and I'll see you and we'll do a decrease in round number 33. So just coming all the way around from round number 32. So round number 33 just in the regular stitch now work going around is that you wanna do a decrease again. So single crochet in the next six. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then put the next two together. So that's your decrease for this round. I'm gonna leave you another set of instructions here before I let you go. So you're gonna do six and then two, six and then two. So then rounds number uh, 34 and 35 is the regular first stitch again. So I want you to do this decrease round, okay, number um, 33 and then also continue then to do the fur round for round one and two again for rounds number 34 and 35 and then meet me back here and we'll do even more decreasing from that particular point. So let's uh, do that now and I'll see you at the end of that section. So let's move along. We just finished round number 35 which was the second round of a first stitch and now continuing along this is another decrease number 36 which is gonna be five in a row with single crochet. So one, two, three, four, five and six and then the next one's two together. So now that we've got that you're gonna do that all the way around. So six and then two together, six and two together. I'm gonna leave another set of instruction with you now. I want you to do round number 37 so the next round only to do the fur. Don't do the back loops of that one. Wait for me and then so do this one here a reduction. So uh, six and then two, six and then two and then do one round of the first stitch for round number 37 and then meet me back here in just a moment. I've just completed round number 37 and that was one stitch only of just a fur. So rounds number 38 and 39 are both decreased rounds here. So when we go to do the back loop only in round number 38 we're going to decrease and we're only gonna do four in a row in the back loop. So one and continuing along two, three, it's getting tighter back here and four and then put the next two together and you're gonna do that all the way around and according to the designer. Sorry I just dropped a stitch by accident. Pick it up. So according to this there should be 30 stitches in the circle when you come all the way around. So please do this so it's four and then two and then four and two. Please do that and I'll see you at the end of this round and then we'll move on to 39 which is the next round. Okay, I'm just coming around on number 38. Number 39 we are going to do both loops uh, like a regular. So it's like the regular third but we are decreasing. So it's going to be three in a row. So it's gonna be one, two and three and then just the next two together. So it's a decrease here of one, two, three, decrease, one, two, three, decrease. Please do that and I'm gonna leave you a set of instruction. Then after you do that round do one more of the fur again. So round number 40 is the fur. So do the decrease of three and two, three and two and then uh, do one round of fur stitch for round number 40 and meet me back here in just a moment. If you wanna start stuffing your, um, your character you can. I wouldn't overstuff it at this point but you can if you want to. Okay round number 40 is complete. It's just a one for a round and now 40 
one we are going to do another decrease. We're, we're getting to the point where we're gonna get right to the back of the head. So we're gonna now decrease now in the back loop only of uh, that same round and we're going to do two single crochets uh, one after another. So one and two and then the next two are two together. So two single crochets in a row and then two together and please do that and there's a total count of 18 single crochets by the time you get around. Just verify your counts and then meet you back here in just a moment. So let's move on now to round number 42. In the both loops we're gonna single crochet the next. So we're just gonna single crochet the next and then put the next two together and we're gonna keep doing that all the way around. So single crochet the two together. So single crochet the next, single crochet the next two together. Please, please do that all the way around for round number 42. Okay, 42 is now complete. Work number 43 is just a first stitch. This is the last first stitch. I bet you're happy of the head. And then we're gonna move our way down the neck. So just one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, and ten. And just first stitch all the way around. And this is round number 43. So I'm all the way around on number 43. And now the remaining stitches that are left in the, in the back loop only is that you are going to put two together all the way around so every two goes together and then what we're going to do is then just trim this yarn and then just feed with the tapestry needle through the remaining six stitches to bring it all completely shut. So I'll meet you back there in just a moment as we get this done together. Okay I've gone all the way around and I'm just gonna pull up the strand. I'm gonna pull out my stitch marker as well. And what I want to do is that I wanna just seal this final hole. So put this strand on a tapestry needle. And I want you to just collect all the stitches. So kinda like close line them together. So just start picking them up together and bring them all to a conclusion. And when you pull everything should just pretty much suck in right in and eliminate this hole. And then you can also go across the hole to seal it. And once you're satisfied just tie it into position. And just stick it down through. Now because you have a neck you should be able to have access to that coming into the inside. And so on the inside here I'm just going to secure it just with some fibers so I'm not going through the project just in some fibers. Here we go. Before we apply any stuffing into it we wanna also do the nose. So using some black yarn we wanna create a Y shape that is in the front of the nose here and uh, kind of reminds me of a frag at the moment but um, um, so what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put a Y in the nose. Let's take a look at the pattern and see what we're up to. So in the picture here we have a Y shape just like you see here and uh, it's kind of just kind of eyeing it up and uh, it's not too hard. So I just wanna go right straight into the center and then just kind of Y it out. So it's just one complete strand jumping in and then one strand and then one strand. So it's actually made up of three. So let's grab our tapestry needle and try our best. I'm not very good at uh, doing stuff like this. So what I wanna do is I wanna create a sli slip knot with my plaque and I want to access the inside of this so that you cannot see it. So just let's go to our character and let's back out you a little bit here. So what I wanna do is that I wanna just put it onto the inside. So I just wanna kinda secure it into position so get the nose here. And when I say secured I just want to go into a couple, a couple fibers. Nothing. Don't go through the project at all. Just get a few fibers here just to collect it and it will hold it into position and go through the slip knot and that will secure that from falling out. Now what we have to do is that we have to get it here. So we wanna get to the center. So the center is pretty easy to find. So I wanna look at the eyes here and try to get it 
thing and I wanna go below the center point because it's almost kind of a nose area. So just stay within a section here that's just below. And then go up over the nose area. And that when I say nose it over the center. And when you pull it you don't wanna over pull it so that it changes the shape. And then once you get that one in you need to go on a Y. So just roughly guess where you think it's gonna be. And then back down through the other section. And just eyeing it up again where you think the other side is going to be. Then down through the original. I'm not very good at embroidery stuff. I have to admit, it scares me actually. <laughs> I always mess up something. So there you go. So there it's in. So what I'm gonna do is that I'm just gonna fold it so I can see it on the inside. Make sure nothing is looking really loose. And just going in with some fibers here. I just wanna stay with inside this. And I wanna just tie it so it doesn't wanna fall out. And you can tie it more if you're feeling more, you think you need to. So now the nose should be good. Just like you see. Kind of reminds me of a sheep at this moment. So now what I'm gonna do is that I'm gonna stuff this. I'm not gonna stuff it firm but I'm gonna get pretty close to it so then I can start the neck next. So let's begin to stuff. So I'm just gonna reach in through the neck. I don't do amigurumi very often. So I'm not an expert at it by any stretch but I have done some pretty cool stuff um, within my skill level. And when I say skill level I mean like really as a non amigurumi person. <laughs> some people just have an absolute natural gift for it. And uh, it's actually looking pretty awesome. So it's almost looking like a lion at this moment. So you notice that it's kind of like it doesn't wanna come in a little bit. So you know how you do that? I've done this before. So this is something I do know because I've had to correct myself a few times. So if you just grab the same color of yarn and create an extra long tail for the one side just like this and then do the other side with the tapestry needle. What you can do is that you can pull it in so that it wants to shape. So what you wanna do is just below the eye Okay, into the other eye. And you go straight across. Okay. And then do you see how the loops hanging out? So I wanna go in somewhere a little different spot but pretty close to it so it looks like it belongs. And then come out the other side here. Okay and I wanna feed that through the loop. Do you see what's happening already? So the more you pull on it, the more it's going to take its shape. Okay. 
and you can always pull on it more later if you have to. So now that you have that done what you can do is with these strands now just weave them in underneath the stitches and you, you shouldn't even see them. So the weaving in is actually getting it stuck so it doesn't want to come out on you. Okay and then once you have it done you can just take it through and I go out the other side just somewhere. And then I take my scissors and I cut that yarn and when it relaxes it will fall onto the inside the loose end. And then you'll do the same with the other strand that's hanging out. Okay just weave it in and out of the strands and then you're good to go. So this is how you would then shape a face if you had to if you had not narrowed in. Uh, for my particular rooster I once did is that it made a huge difference of sucking in the face versus leaving it out. It made the eyes look like it actually didn't belong. So I uh, do this and then I'll be back in just a moment. So as we get started with doing the neck we're going to attach to the underside here. So let me just back you out here. We're gonna attach to the underside of the neck and right where you were doing this the stitch marker which I can see that there's evidence of it here is where we're going to attach. The goal is is that I need you to have 32 single crochets all the way around. So if you have too many just uh, do make sure you only get 32. So then put two together if you have to. Also then what we're going to do then is in round number two we're going to do a slight decrease once and then rounds number 13 through 14 is the first stitch. There is no decreasing at all so just think of it as like a tube. This is how the legs are done. So you're gonna do fur, 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 fur and then back loop, back loop, back loop, back loop and then regular single crochet. So at the end of this we're not gonna end up with a ball shape like this. We're just gonna end up being a flat tube and then that will attach then to your project uh, for the body when we get to that particular point. So let's get ourselves started on the neck and uh, I'm going to leave the set of instructions with you because you know how to do the first stitch. I'm gonna get yourself started and then I'm just gonna go watch TV and then I'll see you next time as we finish the body and I'll obviously be back to do a recap and then we'll begin the body in the next video. So let's start the neck. So just turning it upside down I got a little bit of stuffing and I, well it's not it's not firm as I want it to be but I want to get ourselves started. So what I want to do is equally get 32 stitches around. If you're following the exact counts you will have to put in an extra um, single crochet somewhere in order to do that but I want you to just aim for 32. So you just have to just line it up and just follow it along. and you will be doing the first stitch soon. So any imperfections that you do have you can bury it. So that was two and then I want you to go all the way around and get 32 in there for me and then meet me back here in just a moment. In round number two we're going to do an increase. I think I said a decrease before but it's actually an increase and what we need to do is that we are going to single crochet the next seven. So jumping immediately to the first one that you started with. So you're gonna do seven in a row. So one, two, three, four, five, six and seven and then put two into the next one. So the goal is is that I need you to end up with 36 stitches before you get back or when you get back to the stitch marker. So it's going to be um, seven in a row and then two into the next. So just come all the way around and I've got all my stitches in that I need which is awesome and I've got my stitch marker in play and we're going to continue. So now I need you to do rounds number three all the way to 14 just like I explained before on my sheet. Just you might wanna write this down for yourself. So three, four, five. So the first one is the fur, back loop, regular. So you want to get a stitch counts of what is it here? It is 36 stitches. So every time you wanna recount your stitches it's 36. So this is a tube like structure so there's no adding or subtracting involved in rounds number three to 14 and when I come back I'll have that done. I'm just gonna go and enjoy and just do these last rounds in front of the television and uh, I will see you and I'll be right back 
in your time but uh, I'll be back in just a bit when I get all this done. So last time I left you I was doing my one or sorry rounds three to fourteen and you can see that there's four layers of fur here and I ended up on 14 and then I fastened off. I left an extra long tail just in case I have to sew this later and then that's it. This thing is actually pretty huge. It reminds me of uh, one of those Barbie heads when it's sitting on the coffee table. Um, you know the ones with the long hair. So this is kind of neat and this is where we're gonna go. I'm not gonna stuff any further at this time. I'm just gonna put it aside and then we're gonna move on to our next tutorial. So this is uh, how it looks like so far. Kind of reminds me of a bit of a sheep. Um, I'm really quite amazed how big this thing is. I'm excited to do the body next. So I'll see you next time as we complete the body.